I'm going to show you one of the most unexpected queen sacrifices in the history of chess. And it was just played at the St. Louis Rapid Tournament, part of the Grand Chess Tour. A game between top grandmasters, Alireza Firusha with the white pieces playing against Wesley So. And the reason this game is so exciting is because you learn a lot about the relative value of the pieces. That a queen is a queen, but other pieces, they can just work fantastically together and create a lot of problems for the opponent despite being a queen down. You're going to see some amazing tactical ideas and if you're interested to see more just you're one click away from subscribing to the channel and I appreciate all your support and then I promise to cover more exciting queen sacrifices on this channel. Let's have a look at the game. Firusha goes for e4 and as we can expect from Wesley So, he's playing solid chess. So he goes for the Petrov defense with knight f6 and we get to see a very well-known theoretical position. Let's have a look. Knight takes e5, pawn goes to d6, knight back to f3, knight takes e4, d4, d5, bishop d3, bishop f5, all well-known theory, castling kingside, bishop e7 or rook e1, black castles and now white plays the move knight e2. So here we see that rook, bishop and knight are all attacking the knight on e4. So black has a choice, may take the knight on d2, but the main theoretical continuation is to play the move knight d6, offering the exchange of bishops. White can take on f5, white can also continue developing here with the move knight f1, so that after bishop takes d3, you can take back with the queen. Queen is more actively placed there. c6 played, now the bishop comes to f4 and black continues developing with a move knight a6 and well this is all well-known modern theory is very well-known theoretical position uh, at the highest level and it's a symmetrical position with only one open file and potentially a lot of pieces can be swapped there if black is in time to consolidate but for the moment white is more active and with active pieces you're able to cause a lot of problems look what's happening here the move h4 is played so that after the move knight c7, the knight comes into g5 and white threatens checkmate in one on h7. Black is for a choice. He can take the knight on uh, g5 and after bishop takes, well, um, white is um, having the bishop versus the knight. Maybe it's a little bit better for white, but Wesley goes for the move g6. So he is stopping the mating threat in a different way and Firusha continues he wants his knight to join plate could go to g3 but where is it going next well in the game instead he goes for the move knight to h2 and the knight is on its way to g4 that's a more active square from where the knight controls various dark squares and white is trying to provoke uh, black for making uh, further concessions up to here we are still following some grandmaster games in the game Caruana, Shahriar Mamadiyarov, there followed the move queen d7, was played last year in Bucharest. Here, Wesley So goes for the move knight f5. Very understandable move because the knight covers the h6 square. So uh, there's not a knight coming there yet. And black is about to play the move bishop d6. That's black's strategy. Black wants to exchange minor pieces. And once the queen is there, the rooks are connected and rooks can be swapped as well. And then you can expect the game to end in a boring draw. But Firusha is there and has various ideas of uh, continuing the game here. But he went for knight g4. But it should be said that maybe rook e5 is a very strong move with ideas to take on f5. Now, bishop d6, which was black's main idea, runs into rook takes f5. You're protecting the bishop at the same time. If you take on f5, queen takes f5. It's going to be checkmate next. Boom. So things are complicated with rook on e5. There are other ideas, including f6. Very complicated stuff, but the main line here is rook takes f5. If you take on f5, you take first on c7, deflecting the queen. If you do take, then the knight comes into e6 with a knight fork. So queen d7 is a possibility. Now queen comes to g3. You cannot stick to your material after f takes g5, h takes g5, white has only one pawn for the exchange. But look at this king, it's wide open. I think this is looking very dangerous. But back to the game. There followed knight g4, was played. 
Now bishop d6 is played. And now the most interesting moment of the tournament so far. Here, a lot of possibilities, a lot of moves can be considered. But the move played by Ferusha is something I think not many of you would have expected or seen at all. Queen takes f5, white sacrifices the queen. Absolutely insane idea. But the point is that you have to take the queen. If you take the bishop, it's queen takes bishop and white is a piece up. So queen is taken. And now the knight comes in to h6 with check. And the king has only two squares to go. Well, it's simple. You cannot go to h8 because of knight takes f7 and white wins back the queen with interest. So that's losing on the spot. Therefore, king has to go to g7. And now it's knight takes f5 with another check. King goes to g6, and now it's knight takes d6. And here we have at least a moment to, to breathe here. So what's happening? White has sacrificed the queen and got a knight and a bishop in return for it, plus an extra pawn. Well, that doesn't look like it's much, but on the other hand, the king is quite, uh, quite exposed. So what is black going to play here? Well, first we have to understand what is the compensation. Well, with a knight on d6... It's not easy for black to offer the exchange of pieces. Like rook e8 is a move you would like to play, but that hangs the rook. So white is controlling the open file. Secondly, another very important idea is to get the rook to the third rank. Rook e3, rook g3 to attack the king. With a potential discovered uh, check, you are about to win back more material. So that's one very cool idea. Now black decided to play here the move h5. This may come as a surprise. There are other moves as uh, as well. For instance, h6 could be played, but the problem of h6 is there's h5 with check. It's another pawn sacrifice. And the idea is that if you do take the pawn, it's knight takes f7. You're attacking the queen. And look at this king. There are not that many squares the king can go to. And the attack is going on. Like rook will come here with a check, with a lot of mating ideas. Knight can come to e5. Not simple at all. It's incredibly dangerous. Therefore, black doesn't want to deal with this h5 idea. Play the move h5 here himself. Now, white can still play rook e3. It was not played by Firusha, but I think it's a very understandable move. Let me show you one line. If you do attack the knight on g5, the idea is now rook g3. So you're sacrificing the knight. After f takes g5, rook takes g5. Well, it looks like white is uh, doing, doing okay here. After king h6, you're standing in a potential discovered uh, check. Rook f5 is there, king g6, you can repeat the moves. That's one option. Second option, instead of king h6, is to give up the queen. You take with the queen the rook on g5. After bishop takes g5, we have the situation where white has a bishop and two pawns for the rook, which is interesting compensation, but okay, you don't want to give black the choice between having a forced draw or keep the game going. That's very impractical. So back to this position after h5, Firusha grabs what you think is probably not an important pawn. He takes with a knight on b7, attacks the queen. Now the queen also got to retain control over the knight on c7. If white is able to, to get at knight, white has three minor pieces for the queen, plus a number of pawns and an exposed king. That's huge. Queen c8 was played here and... Black is attacking the knight. The knight has a choice. It can go back to d6, which is okay. But understandably, white wants to place the knight on c5. Why is such a logical move? Well, you have minor pieces. And minor pieces, they need stability. They need the support of their own pawns. Because now the knight is much more stable. But a drawback of this move is that black can play rook e8. Which was not a possibility had the knight been on d6. Now, rook takes e8. Interesting move. And obviously, queen takes e8. It's not good because of bishop takes c7 and white gets its third minor piece. So the knight has to take back on e8 instead. Now the rook comes into the e-file again. And we see that white is incredibly active with these four pieces. Now, black is four choice. What is he going to play here? Very understandable. He activates the queen. Queen f5 was played. Maybe queen g4 was also an interesting uh, option to attack the bishop. And, uh, well, it's it's just a very complicated position. But let's see what happens after queen f5. You're also attacking this pawn on c2 as well as the bishop. So the knight comes back. 
to d3, to attack, sorry, to protect that uh, bishop on uh, f4 and aim for the e5 square. So the knight could land there with a check and the pawn on f7 can be taken as well. It's incredibly dangerous. f6 is played to attack the knight on g5, to cover the e5 square. And you feel like white's attack is coming to an end here. But look what's happening. Rook e7 played here. And what is this? The knight can just be taken. Was not played by Wesley So. Because if you do that, it's knight e5 check. The king has been cut off along the seventh rank. If you go to h6, it's h takes g5 with check. The king can't go anywhere. Black is forced to give up the queen. But then you are in a desperate situation with a rook endgame, rook and knight endgame being a few pawns down. Looks really bad. The alternative is to go with the king to f6 to attack the rook. But there is this move. Bishop takes g5 with check. The king cannot go anywhere. The bishop protects the rook. Only move is queen takes g5 with the idea that if you take back, it's king takes e7. First things first, intermediate check. Rook f7, the king has only one square to go to, it's e6, and then you take with a pawn on g5 and white has a winning rook and knight endgame. So therefore, the knight on g5 is poisoned, cannot be taken. What is black going to do instead? Bring its pieces into play. Knight goes to g7. That looks a very understandable move. Now, various possibilities here. White played this move, rook f7. It's pinning. The pawn on f6. So if you do take on, um, on g5, here again, it's rook takes f5. You take the queen, knight takes f5, for instance, bishop takes g5. And it's just an incredibly complex endgame. There's knight takes d4. The game continues. It's bishop versus, uh, sorry, bishop and two pawns versus a rook. Enough compensation, but this can still go either way. Let's go back. After rook f7, black was not tempted to simplify by giving up the queen that easily and instead played here the move rook g8 trying to support the knight even better but we continue the game with another amazing idea bishop e5 white is increasing the pressure on that pawn on f6 as still there are ideas to win the queen back another idea of this move is that the knight is heading for the f4 square but black protects the pawn on uh, f6 with a move knight e8 so no rook takes f6 at the moment what is white going to play now well you would expect the knight to come to f4 with check looks crushing but the problem is that black sacrifices the queen and after taking back is f takes g5 both the bishop and the rook are hanging which means that white can only collect a couple of pawns for it for the piece Maybe this is not what you exactly want as white. So let's go back. Rather than playing knight f4, there follow this move, f3. You're thinking, what is the idea of this move? Well, it's a silent move. You're just trying to control the position, preventing any counterplay. Maybe at the right moment, a move like knight f4 can be played. But what is black going to do with its pieces? These pieces, they're sort of still made that they can barely move. Black wants to do something. You don't want to be locked um, by your own pieces. So a move like king h6 could be considered, but it's not clear what black is going to do next. Therefore, black took a drastic measure here by going far away back with the queen to c8. That's a remarkable move. So the idea is that now there are possibilities of taking on g5, maybe on e5, depends on what, uh, what exactly is going to happen. But at least... The queen is no longer hanging on f5. That's the idea behind the move. But there follows knight f4 check. Okay, easy choice. King h6 runs into rook h7 with a stunning mating pattern. King is checkmated at the side of the board. So the king has to go to f5. And here we have a critical moment. The king is just kind of stuck. It cannot go anywhere. But what is the move which has to be played? Well, Firusha thought, I'm going to take a pawn on h5 and I create a threat of taking the pawn on f6. Very logical, but he is missing the chance for glory. He could have played here this move, knight h7, and this is absolutely crushing. This idea is that the knight on f4 
still controls both the e6 and the g6 square. The king can't go anywhere. If white were to play, he would take on f6, and if knight takes it, rook takes f6 with mate. Therefore, queen d8. The queen protects the pawn on f6 one more time, but there is bishop takes f6, and this is just crushing. The f-file is opened, and the king will be checkmated. One line, for instance, is if you take this knight on f4, the king is about to run away. You, you may take the queen on d8, but even better is this move. Bishop g5 check. Double check, in fact. The king can only go to g3. Then it's bishop f4 check. The king can only go to h4 to take that pawn. And now it's another silent move. King h2. And there's nothing, but absolutely nothing, black can do against this threat of g3. Even if you would take on g2, it's king takes g2, and on the next move, there's bishop g3 with checkmate. Pawn covers g4 square, knight covers the g5 square. The king is going to be checkmated. This would have been absolutely brilliant. One other line after knight h7, queen d8, bishop takes f6, is of course just to take on f6, but in that case, it's rook takes f6, black has to give up the queen, and after knight takes f6, king takes f6, this endgame is absolutely hopeless. White has four pawns and a knight for the rook. That's a technical win. Unfortunately, this didn't happen. Would have been a fantastic line to convert your queen sacrifice into victory. But after knight takes h5, black has this option to sacrifice the rook on g5. Very important. Don't take back now on, h5, on g5 because of king g6 and both the knight and the rook are hanging. Instead, there followed knight takes f6, and the idea is the same as in the other line. If you take on f6 with black, it's rook takes f6, this is checkmate. But, very important, after knight takes f6, instead, the king goes to g6 to attack the rook on f7. Very important, the rook goes to f8 to pin the knight. The knight is stuck on the back rank. Now the rook is also hanging. The rook can only go to f5. The rook is there. Maybe you lost the control over the position, then at least try to enjoy the beauty of this game. Because now Firusha decided to take on e8. Very interesting move, very logical move. Even better would have been here to play this move, h5 check. The idea is that if the king goes to g5, it's rook to g8, and the king is going to be mated. If you go king h6, rook g6, beautiful mating pattern with rook, pawn, and knight. King goes to h4, then it's bishop g3 with checkmate. So after h5, sort of only move here is to go rook takes h5, but then you take on e8. Now the big difference, having inserted that pawn move h5, is that you're attacking the queen on c8. After the queen goes away, you can take on h5, and the rest is a matter of technique. White has a rook, bishop, and a number of pawns for the queen. That should be sufficient. However, rook takes e8 was played. Now the queen goes away, goes to b7, a6 was another square for the queen to go to, but at least the rook is now relatively safe. Still, probably this is winning for, for white if you find a brilliant move knight g4, and the idea is to go rook g8 next. The attack is going on, it's far from simple, so don't forget it's a rapid game, anything can happen with a shorter time control. Mistakes are part of the game. However, Firusha played the move h5 instead, and now the big difference is that king goes to f7. And that's a problem, because even though the rook is still protected, black is about to take on f6, eliminate the defender, and then hit the rook on e8. So the rook goes away to b8. It's protected by the bishop. The queen doesn't have that many good squares to go to. It went to e7, and it looks as if black is holding on to its position, but... The h-pawn comes now, and it's just two squares away from becoming a new piece, likely a queen, of course. What is uh, black going to do? Well, black needs to get out of this mess and wants to aim for simplifications. Therefore, rook takes e5 was played, getting rid of the bishop. After d takes e5, queen takes e5, the rook is under threat, and black is about to take the knight on f6 or the rook, or maybe even give a check, but... We are not finished with the tactics yet. Rook f8 check, guys. That's the move we were looking for. Fantastic idea. Of course, the rook can't be taken because of knight d7 with a knight for white wins the queen. If you play another move, like king e7 or king e6, 
there is rookie eight and you force the simplifications as we get a pawn end game but the h pawn promotes first that's game over so the only move after rook f8 check is king g6 white cannot do much just run with the pawn h7 you're about to promote a pawn but here it's queen e1 check king h2 and black is just in time to force a perpetual so king g1 queen e1 the players played a fantastic game leading to a perpetual check in the end it's a draw but what a game it was i think i cannot recall such a queen sacrifice where you have just a few pieces for like long-term compensation there are no immediate threats against the king these sacrifices these long-term peace sacrifices they are fascinating especially when it's a queen sacrifice but i thought Firusha played a fantastic game let me know in the comments what you think of it subscribe to the channel make me a favor guys and i will cover more beautiful queen sex like this one